My name is Janice Hansen, and I live in Kennebunk, Maine. In 2002, all seven towns in our water district voted to have fluoride artificially added to our public water supply. Most of us have heard that adding fluoride to drinking water was one of the 10 greatest health achievements of the 20th century, but there has also been controversy about this policy. I wanted to know exactly why and how fluoride came to be added to our drinking water, so I read these four books. The Fluoride Deception by Christopher Bryson, The Case Against Fluoride by Paul Connett, Ph.D., Fluoride in Drinking Water by the National Research Council of the National Academies, and Is Fluoride Killing You Too by Betty Dowdell. I would like to share with you what I have learned about fluoride. In 1916, Frederick McKay opened a dental practice in Colorado Springs. He noticed that people living there had brown, mottled teeth and that their teeth were surprisingly resistant to decay. He learned that a calcium fluoride salt in the water caused this condition. In 1892, fluoride was found in dental enamel and scientists speculated that it might be necessary for strong teeth. In 1925, this theory was put to the test at Johns Hopkins University. Scientists fed rats only slightly more fluoride than occurs naturally in the diet, but found that the rat's teeth became weaker. In 1944, it was essential to keep knowledge of the Manhattan Project, the atomic bomb, a secret from the general public. Workers who had been exposed to high levels of fluoride while building the bomb were going to sue the government after the war was over because all their teeth had turned brown and fallen out from fluoride exposure. Farmers in New Jersey were famous for their high-quality peaches, which were sold to the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York. Their farms were downwind of the DuPont Chemical Factory, which was producing millions of pounds of fluoride for the Manhattan Project. In the summer of 1943, the farmers complained that something was burning up their crops. Farm workers who ate the produce vomited all night. Poultry died after an all-night thunderstorm. Some cows were so crippled they could not stand up and grazed by crawling on their bellies. Horses looked sick and were too stiff to work. General Leslie Groves, known as the man who built the atomic bomb, invited Willard Killey, the farmer's spokesman, to dine with him. Even though Mr. Killey had himself been diagnosed with fluoride poisoning, he took General Grove's word for it that the farmer's interests were being safeguarded by their government. Fluoride added to our drinking water comes from the wet scrubbing of the smokestacks of the phosphate fertilizer industry. The Environmental Protection Agency requires that this industrial waste product be captured so it doesn't get into the environment where it would kill crops, livestock, and marine life. In 1982, salmon in the Columbia River were tagged. Shortly after the tagging began, the Alcoa Aluminum Company built a smelter on the river which spewed fluoride into the water. The fluoride narcotized the brains of the salmon so they could no longer find their way upstream to their spawning grounds. The most common source of fluoride in lakes, rivers, and streams comes from artificially fluoridated municipal water supplies. We actually drink approximately 3% of the water that flows out of our taps. The rest goes down the drain and ends up in places where it is prohibited by the EPA. This is the label on the 20,000 pounds, 10 tons, of hydrofluosilicic acid that is added to our drinking water per year at an annual cost of $20,000. Because hydrofluosilicic acid is so corrosive, OSHA requires that employees working with it wear hazardous material gear. Greg Pargellis, Chief Operator at the Kennebunk, Kennebunkport, and Wells Water District is calibrating the fluoride feed equipment. 
the only additive to our drinking water which requires the handler to wear acid-proof goggles, a respirator, rubber gloves, and a full-length bib for their protection is hydrofluosilicic acid. Hydrofluosilicic acid is never found in nature because it is highly reactive. The naturally occurring fluoride compound found in Branch Brook, the primary source of our local water supply, is a stable calcium fluoride salt which will not aggressively seek to combine with calcium in our bodies. Since fluorine is a negatively charged element, it is attracted to positively charged elements such as calcium. That is why it is so dangerous when it is ingested. It bonds with the calcium in our bones, but over time it weakens them because it is bioaccumulative and because it changes the bone's crystalline structure, making them porous. In China, there are areas that are naturally heavily fluoridated. On the right is Dr. Harold C. Hodge, who in 1945 became the leading proponent of artificial water fluoridation. In the center is Dr. Phyllis Mulinex, a national leader in the science of neurotoxicology who in 1990 stated that fluoride is a serious neurotoxin and should not be added to drinking water. This is Newburg, New York, a town chosen for the initial experiment with artificial water fluoridation. Non-fluoridated Kingston, New York was chosen for comparison. Between 1945 and 1995, a period of 50 years, records of the rate of dental caries in children in both towns were kept and there was no difference. However, children in fluoridated Newburgh showed significantly higher rates of dental fluorosis than children in non-fluoridated Kingston. These are the teeth of a child who has dental fluorosis. In 2012, it was estimated by the Centers for Disease Control that 57% of American youth between 12 and 15 years of age now has dental fluorosis as a result of drinking artificially fluoridated water. This is the label from the back of a tube of fluoridated toothpaste. It gives the following warning. Keep out of reach of children under six years of age. If more than used for brushing is accidentally swallowed, get medical help or contact a poison control center right away. In 1999, the Centers for Disease Control admitted that the major benefits of fluoride are topical and not systemic. The amount of fluoride in the pea-sized dot of toothpaste is the equivalent found in two 8-ounce glasses of artificially fluoridated drinking water. If we drink the recommended eight 8-ounce eight glasses of fluoridated water per day, every day, shouldn't we call a poison control center immediately? Both the Centers for Disease Control and the American Dental Association recommended in 2006 that babies' infant formula not be prepared with fluoridated water because the systemic action of fluoride via the blood before tooth eruption can lead to damage of the enamel and mottled teeth. Babies who drink fluoridated water can develop this lifelong dental condition. Until 1938, Fluoride was used strictly as rat poison. Also in 1938, the Food and Drug Administration began to approve all new drugs before they could be sold. However, any drugs already in use in 1938 were grandfathered in. So to this day, the FDA has never approved of fluoride for human consumption. This is the fluoridation equipment at the Kennebunk, Kennebunkport, and Wells Water District. If it were unplugged, it would stop the addition of hydrofluosilicic acid to our public water supply in an instant. In closing, I would like to show you a statement that was signed in 1999 by 1,500 scientists, engineers, and lawyers at the Environmental Protection Agency's headquarters in Washington, D.C., opposing water fluoridation and asking the EPA to provide them with non-fluoridated drinking water at work. If you would like to read this statement online, Google 
nofluoride.com and then click on EPA Scientists Oppose.